made, we will rejoice and be glad in peace. This is the day that our Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in peace. Beloved, greed and love for money is particularly a part of the fallen nature of man. Jesus and his disciples considered money helpful but very dangerous or evil at the same time. However, the scriptures teach us how to neutralize greed and maximize the helpfulness of money. Let's enjoy this spiritual benefit found in Mass Gospel, chapter 12, from verse 13 to 21, guided by the theme, Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. I take the reading. Later, they sent some of the Pharisees and Herodians to Jesus to catch him in his words. They came to him and said, Teacher, we know you are a man of integrity. You aren't swayed by men because you pay no attention to who they are. But you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Should we pay or shouldn't we? But Jesus knew their hypocrisy. Why are you trying to trap me? He asked. Bring me a denarius and let me look at it. They brought the coin and he asked them, Whose portrait is this? And whose inscription? Caesar's, they answered. Then Jesus said to them, Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. And they were amazed at him. Then the Sadducees who say there is no resurrection came to him with a question. He said, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies and leaves a wife for no children, the man must marry the widow and have children for his brother. Now, there were seven brothers. The first one married and died without leaving any children. The second one married the widow, but he also died leaving no child. He was the same with the third. Others as extreme greed for wealth or material gain leads to extortion, covetousness, and fraud. In Paul Pitt's research, The Science of Greed, Monopoly games were rich, with some players secretly being given more money, more access, more opportunities to move around the board. They studied the attitudes of 100 of such players in a hidden camera. The findings were the rich players showed signs of physical dominance. The rich players were louder with the coins and the move around the board. The rich players felt entitled to eat more snacks from the available bowels of snacks. The rich players became ruder than other persons as the game went. They were less considerate of the poor players and more demonstrative of their success and money in the game. When the players were finally asked to speak about their experience in the game at the end, the rich players did not have any regard over how the other players
players were losing their belongings. Rather, they were talking about how they would have used room money to buy more property in the rich game of monopoly. As a person's level of wealth increases, so his feelings of compassion and empathy go down. And his feelings of entitlement, of deserving this and their ideology of self-interest increases. The more wealthy a person is, the more he says, greed is good. Indeed, greed is evil. And it will destroy us as Christians if we are not careful. The loss for material things will certainly consume us. The Bible gives us example of God's people destroyed because of greed to include Lot, Achan, Saul, Ahab, Gehazi, Pharaoh, Ananias, and Sapphira. In our passage, Jesus Christ addresses the issue of greed. Greed is not an ambition to do well. It is not an ambition for a promotion or the desire to have a higher score in examination. God wants us to be productive. He wants us to be growth-oriented and hard-working people. However, it is not wrong to have the things that we need in life. In fact, we all need money for our survival. But Jesus is speaking about greed or the love of money. Whatever you do, Work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Working hard in your career or business does not mean you are greedy. No one is called a fool for being productive in either farming, trading, and offering any service to humanity and for the growth of Christ's kingdom. Greed is not saving for the future. Joseph in Genesis chapter 41 stored up grains in Egypt for the supply of food during famine in the future. As such, increase is not the problem. Saving or storing is not a problem. The problem is the way we use the increase of our wealth and not being in a way rich towards God. Greed centers everything around self. When God provides for us, it is like a river flowing. The source is God. The channels, the flow of these provisions is through us so that we might let it out for others to be blessed downstream. How are we rich towards God? Do you show how much you value God? To be rich toward God is the opposite of laying up earthly treasure for ourselves. Often, we show how much we are valued by hurting of God's provisions, items, for 20, 30 years, don't forget, nothing is enough for the man for whom enough is too little. According to Epicurus, greed means that enough is too little, but he is rich who is content with the least. So great. Do you misunderstand creation? The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Psalm number 34, verses 1 and 2. We are stewards, not owners. We do not possess the ability to create anything out of nothing. Yet, we reshape that which has been created 
for our use in greed and worship is misplaced. Greed is idolatry. The things that belong to the earthly nature are the things we desire to keep for ourselves. Sexual immorality, impurity, loss, evil desire, and greed. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. In Romans chapter 1, verse 29. We can overcome greed by being honest in how we acquire wealth. This honest money dwindles away. But whoever gathers money, little by little makes it grow. Proverbs number 13, verse 11. We have to use our wealth to serve God. Honor the Lord with your wealth with the best fruits of all your crops. Then your vines will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim with new wine. Proverbs number three, verses nine and 10. Wealth should be a tool in ministry rather than objects of worship and security. We need to be generous with our wealth to God and his work. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as Christians, our joy and hope produce love and generosity. Grant that we might generously and let us pray. Heavenly Father, as Christians, our joy and hope produce love and generosity. Grant that we might be generous and giving particularly to the needy when our money and property increase. Might we not think how we can store them up beyond our need. For the wealthiest person is not who has the most, but who needs the least. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in peace. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in peace. This is the day the Lord has made. We will Thank mm -hmm. you.